hundreds of workers are breathing new life into Europe's highest wooden roller coaster. Colossus is set to return. People from China say, how can you make such a gigantic structure just out of wood? How can these thin Mikado sticks hold? As part of a unique revamp, the technicians have to install enormous elements and exchange each and every rail, even at dizzying heights. It's nothing to do with fear, just caution, because every wrong step up here is fatal. For the team, a battle against the elements is about to begin, and against the clock. The major three-year project has its pitfalls. That's critical for the project. I know. Heide Park Soltau offers adrenaline junkies lots of attractions and rides. The wooden roller coaster Colossus is the park's biggest draw. It's been defining the amusement park skyline since 2001. With a height of 60 meters, 61 degree drops, and peak speeds of 110 kilometers per hour, it's still Europe's highest and fastest wooden roller coaster. It once cost 45 million Deutschmarks and is a giant of world renown, made in Germany. Bastian Lampe, head of rides, experienced the most glorious of times with the roller coaster. I remember the first season here, waiting time was of four hours and everyone was thrilled. People were coming out and just couldn't get over it. They were virtually in tears, hugging one another. Hyder Park is proud of that. Colossus represents Hyder Park like no other roller coaster. But over 20 million passengers in 15 years have taken their toll. The ride closed in 2016 and the renovation work began. Project manager Torsten Berwald and his team of park planners analyze all of the components and face the mammoth task of having to renew the 1,500 meter long rail network, as well as numerous load bearing crossbeams called ledgers. It's like a railroad. We have two rail sections and the ledger beneath them. This is the actual construction that will now be replacing one to one. When it was built back in 2001, the people in charge decided to use prefabricated rails made of laminated veneer lumber. Only these rails can guarantee Colossus's high speeds. This wooden body is what's called a Kato beam. Kato lumber is basically what you see here, very thin layers of pine wood glued on top of each other. The entire rail cross-section is fully impregnated over the whole surface. That's why it's particularly durable and stable. At the end of the day, this is no longer lumber as such, it's more of a technical product that we have here. Stainless steel step plates and threaded connections are intended to extend the service life. It was a custom production, and that's now being completely recreated. We've improved some of the details and incorporated them into the rails and the ledger construction. In terms of material quality and carrying capacity, it's the best material you can install there. But customized production also has its disadvantages. It's not so easy to carry out repairs on site if things wear out or are damaged. You could remove three boards from a classic board rail construction, for example, nail three new boards on, sand them down, assemble them, and away you go. You can renew a section like that relatively easily. But the problem here is that you're dealing with pretty expensive individual components, and they have to be coordinated with each other. Dismantling starts. At the first hill after the banked turn, the workers are removing the first rails. Today is the big day. The rails are going to be carefully taken down, removed from the actual structure, set down and properly disposed of. That's not so easy because of the two components, metal and wood. If you have a look at the bolts and the connection, we've got quite a task facing us here as well.
Over the next few months, the workers also have to tackle the beams beneath the rails. They have to exchange a good third of them, a total of 356 beams. You secure the ledger with the crane, of course, so nothing can happen. Then you take out the bolts here. You can use a bit of force to knock them out. This part of the ledger is taken away first, and then these two are removed together. Each ledger, each rail, looks slightly different because the elements have to withstand different stresses. Nobody has ever exchanged all of the wooden rails on a ride like this before. It's a superlative renovation project with a price tag of 12.5 million euros. If possible, some of the roller coaster's elements are to be reused. The lift chain, which is only six years old, is lying in the station. It pulls the train up the first hill. The chain is several hundred meters long and exposed to enormous stresses. It's well lubricated, as you can see. It looks nice and greasy. There's a bit of flash rust because it's been idle for a while. But we've kept running it occasionally, even while the roller coaster has been out of service, to keep it lubricated, moving and fresh. And it moves nice and smooth, no problems there. A new chain would cost several tens of thousands of euros. I guess a lift chain like this will cost around 60 to 70,000 euros. You're pretty happy if you can recycle it. The fact that the six-ton lift chain has been removed offers further advantages. At last, we can now inspect the components as well. When the chain's installed, you can't turn them by hand. These are the contact surfaces. Is the sprocket uniform or is it worn? But that looks very, very good. The only tough thing is the heavy weight. I think this sprocket alone weighs 300 to 400 kilos because it's made of thick iron. Setting that in motion is no easy task. But when it runs, it runs perfectly. For the reopening, everything has to be as good as new, so the powers that be can guarantee everything will run smoothly over the coming years. That's why the old parts are being checked precisely, even those high up. Here you can see a lawn sprinkler. The plan was originally to let grass grow over the entire track. No, I'm just joking. So here we have a lawn sprinkler. It's a classic sprinkler that we use to water the track if necessary. It's not there to soak the track, it's simply there to keep the wood's moisture content at around 60% so it doesn't become brittle and break. That's particularly important during hot spells. Bastian Lampe orders additional lawn sprinklers. Next comes the airtime hill. Airtime is the moment at which the passenger is lifted out of his seat. There are lots of tracks with about a second of airtime, just a short time when you're up in the air. But here you have three, four, not quite five, but about four seconds of continuous airtime that you can really enjoy. Well, I really enjoy being thrown upwards. You can also be utterly terrified for four seconds, but I love it. In around one year, that should all be possible again. Reopening has been announced for April, in time for the important Easter season. Down in the station, the team is in discussion. Besides exchanging the rails and cross members, the track will also be getting a new attraction. As an on-top element, we've thought up a gigantic themed figure for our guests, which the roller coaster will pass through. We've also come up with show effects within the themed figure. We've thought about how we can make it come to life, how to make it really tangible for our guests. A steel construction forms the framework for the track's extension. There's the side. The new Colossus theme is called Clash of the Titans. The new figure will be accordingly large. When finished, it will be 25 meters high. But nobody is to see what's being built here yet. The construction site at the end of the roller coaster is completely shrouded. It's a well-kept secret. Whatever is being built here will be gigantic. Three weeks later, the rails have already been completely removed from the lower straights. The technicians are now having to work higher up. 
Here too, the workers have to remove all of the bolts, saw through wood, and lift out the rails and cross beams. That's not that's going to be a lot of work, I think. Of course, it's especially difficult up there. We're pretty used to that, but this is a wooden roller coaster, and we're not used to that. It's crucial that people are wearing their harnesses. Keeping yourself safe is the most important thing before starting work at all. Working at these heights is only permitted with the relevant training and appropriate safety equipment. The personal equipment has to be checked each time before starting work. This is the fall arrestor, for example. I'm suspended in that. When I climb up the beams, it moves upwards and lets me move as normal. If I fall down, it triggers and stops me from falling. This is the webbing brake. Lots of climbers use these. It's incredibly important. Personally, I attach myself at the front. There are other belts where you attach yourself at the back. That's very important for scaffolders because when you change position, you're always hooked on. The team works with the heavy components at heights of up to 60 meters. The safety equipment and its correct use are vital. This is not your average day at the office. After all, this is Europe's highest wooden roller coaster. And the biggest challenge is firstly, that nothing happens to anybody. And secondly, that we stay on schedule. The first of the new components will be arriving shortly. Before they do, the assembly team has to have removed enough of the old rails and their cross members. But if the weather doesn't play ball, it's not possible to work on the wooden construction. That would be too dangerous. When it rains, it's more slippery, of course, because algae is formed on the old timbers. That's completely normal. It's just like your carport at home. This roller coaster has sunny spots and shady spots. And naturally, more verdigris is formed in the shady spots. It's not so nice, but it's also not a problem because all the timber is deep pressure impregnated. A regional company is manufacturing the cross members and making sure they're weather resistant. This timber construction company was involved in assembling Colossus back in 2000 and therefore has the necessary experience. Here you can see some of the ledges. They're chamfered here at the top. That's where the rail runs at various angles. So each ledger is different. Here you can see the holes and recesses for the fasteners that are used to bolt the whole thing together. Over 300 of these new support beams are being produced here, exactly according to the engineer's specifications. The timbers arrive pre-cut from the company's own sawmill. They're given their final shape in the computer-controlled joinery machine, all strictly according to plan. We already know which component this is going to be. They're drawn individually into the machine here and are then processed. That usually starts with the sawing unit, then they're milled, drilled and otherwise processed until the component is ready. Once they're completed, the components are protected against weathering. The lumber is exposed to the elements for years and mustn't lose any of its safety-relevant properties. Here in the pressure treatment plant is where we impregnate the individual timbers. We use a vacuum pressure method with heavy metal-free impregnating salt to completely soak the pine wood. This is where we input the impregnation program. We use the full cell method, meaning that the timber is impregnated until it can't absorb any more preservative. After pressure impregnation, the new ledgers are not only weather resistant, they're also protected against insect infestation and fungal growth. As dismantling continues, reconditioned ledger blocks are also being installed on the wooden roller coaster. The stress on some sections of the construction is particularly high. Here, the cross members are additionally reinforced with steel plates. Now you could say, oh, it's not a real wooden roller coaster anymore. 
Purists might complain, but we can't engineer it any other way. We're working with lumber from trees, and when I look at one of these ledges, it's not from the center of the tree. It has no core timber. It's from the left or right of the tree's center, and it needs a certain thickness. And if you design the ledges increasingly larger, at some point there are no longer any trees you can use to produce these ledges. Before the technicians can align and secure the parts, they tighten the connections with an impact wrench. Next, special anchors are used to provide additional stability. Here you can see a spike-like back structure. These are called giga anchors. Ultimately, they transfer the forces from that component to that component. They're pressed in, then the bolts are tightened, and then we have a connection between the ledger and this vertical part, which is what we call a callum leg. Alongside, the anchors are being removed from the old ledgers by hand. That takes time and effort, but there's a good reason for it. If they remain intact when we remove them, we can reuse them. You might think, oh, silly Geka anchor, but they're relatively expensive. When you build a carport, you need eight of them. We need thousands, so it makes sense to reuse parts, particularly in a big project like this, because they really are pretty expensive. One anchor costs around 10 euros. Four to eight of them are needed per crossbeam, depending on stress. This means that, with all of the 356 ledgers to be removed, a total of almost 30,000 euros can be saved. The old ledger shoes are also reused. Later on, they'll connect the support beams to the rail sections. The steel connectors are hammered onto the ledgers and aligned as much as possible is to be reused during the renovation work. The threaded connections are completely new, though. Special nuts are used. You might think they're bent. They have small indentations here. They're pressed onto the thread, and this nut then secures itself. So it can't come loose again because it has a self-locking function. If you hold them next to one another, you can see the difference between the nuts. A connection has to be reliable, and that will do just isn't good enough. It really has to be secure with a safety margin. Under the supervision of the technical manager, the workers are installing four to six new ledgers each day. Fewer is not acceptable, or the reopening at Easter might be jeopardized. A few weeks later in September, that's critical for the project. Mm -hmm. I know. The planners can foresee the first scheduling difficulties. Then our colleague won't be there any longer. You won't be there, and nor will you. What are we going to do? On top of that, the next load of rails is overdue. Without the material, the technicians are forced to take a break. The guys working on the new themed figure are right on schedule, though. A tree-like structure is emerging on the steel frame. Then comes the saving call. OK, I'll drive there now and fetch the truck. Truck's there, Sven. OK, see you soon. Ciao. There were transport difficulties. Then there was heavy traffic on the freeway. We've been waiting a while. We all have. I think we can get to work right away now. Hey, you see the rails? Rails. Ten rails are arriving from the supplier with each truckload. The technicians want to install three of them today. Time is money, right? Before the rail sections are taken to the track, they're checked. You can recognize a good rail by its really smooth surface. It's been wonderfully impregnated for weeks. You can also see here that everything that's been cut out has been painted individually. The bolts have been recessed in the support area. That's really great. Great quality, and it looks really good. Can't say more than that. You really can't tell that it used to be a tree. The product appears to be okay. 
Exactly. That's why you check the quality to make sure that everything arrives safe and sound. Uh -huh. Excuse me? Has the load shifted or what? What shifted? Come up, son. I don't dare. <laughs> Oh, no. OK. Take photos. Photos. Yeah. They're all touching. Yeah, OK. At the back, too. Will do. Some of the expensive rails are directly touching each other. That could have caused transport damage. That's not good. Oh. We'll have to watch out a bit next time. Like here. These are nice spacers. We'll have to do that there as well next time. As you can see, there are lots of people here in the truck all checking to make sure everything's OK. That's incredibly important, because when the parts are installed up there later on, we have to make absolutely sure that everything fits right away. You can't keep installing and removing things. It takes far too long. A mobile construction crane lifts the wooden rails out of the truck. Each rail is removed individually and maneuvered carefully. With a material value of around 15,000 euros, the cargo is very costly. The rails are first temporarily stored. The delivered components have to go right at the top of the track. After shifting position, the telescopic crane lifts the rails into place. Carpenter Karsten Hennig supervises the construction site from the cherry picker. As you can see here, we've built platforms everywhere to ensure that the work is safe, that it works. And you can see all the new ledgers we've installed. We've made real progress. The new rails are going to be installed in the starting turn. At around 60 meters, it's the highest point of the track. The assembly team is waiting on the platform at position 32, amid the 120,000 piece wooden construction. The workers transport the first rail to its final destination. It's crucial for the crane operator down below and the technicians up on the track to work together precisely. They pull the component into the right position using guide ropes. Once it's in position, it's set down and adjusted, and the rail is then fastened to the rail shoe with long studs. Good. Good. One minute. The studs are greased for assembly. The workers can then drive them easily into the wood. The components don't always fit precisely, but the construction workers are prepared for that. If there's too much paint on the rail, it sometimes doesn't fit together as easily as this. Then you have to pull them together with two chain hoists. Of course, I don't want to lift the entire toolbox up here because there'd be no room for anybody to move. So I hope that it fits like that one. Then the tools we have here will be enough. The wind picks up, twice as noticeable and hazardous at this height. The rail starts to swing. Leo, watch it. Boom. Boom would be fatal. The workers have to react quickly. They get the rail section back under control. The component is lifted over the wooden railing into its intended location and installed. Good, good, good. Colossus consists of 320 rail sections like this. The components are between 6 and 12 meters long, and each one is different. That makes installing them complicated. A workplace with a perfect view over Lüneburger Heide. But there's no room for distractions. Mistakes can't be made at this height. Someone to play around, you know, and you can't play around here. You can see yourself if you play around here. It'll be for the last time. It's nothing to do with fear, just caution. Because up here, every wrong step is fatal. It's very simple. The workers installing the rails have reached the valley. The first hill and the first turn at the start of the track have been completed. 
Theoretically, wagons could already run along here before plummeting down the 61 degree downgrade. The new themed figure is already clearly visible at the end of the roller coaster, a 25 meter high demon, the embodiment of a dark force that wants to destroy Colossus, a battle between fire and wood. That's what the amusement park's new story envisages. Work on the demon is still in full swing. The figure is slowly taking on its final form. This is an artificial rock structure that you can see here. The actual supporting framework is a steel structure. The outer shell itself is artificial rock. That's a pure cement mortar made specifically for the sculpturing work so that we can model the figure accordingly. The future resort map shows the figure's highlight. The monster is tearing the rail out of the track. At least, that's what the visitors are supposed to think, not just on paper. When the passengers approach, the section briefly appears to be interrupted, destroyed, an optical illusion for a quick scare. Then the actual section beneath becomes visible again, and the visitors pass through the evil creature. A keen imagination is still needed, but the team is working hard to achieve the desired effect. The scary and striking elements will be highlighted and emphasized with additional show effects. This isn't just a static figure. This figure comes to life thanks to light effects, fog effects, fire effects. All in all, I think the result will be more than acceptable in combination with the figure itself. A section of the roller coaster track runs through the hellish being. And that means that special safety precautions apply. What's called a pull-through test is carried out to check whether the wagon can pass through the figure without any issues. Part of the train, the first and second wagons, are moved very slowly along the entire section with winches so we can check whether the track width and the chassis are OK over every centimetre. They shift while they're running. The train articulates in the dips and on the humps. The trains twist when they're moving into a turn. Does anything mechanical touch inside the vehicles? Does everything match the simulation and the computer models? The rest of the track also undergoes this check. After the tests, work continues on finishing the demon. The themed figure's outer shell is almost done. Just the show effects are missing. Light, fire, and smoke are to accompany the passage through the figure. A towering evil demon that appears to tear the rails out of the track. The remainder of the roller coaster is now almost complete again, too. 3,000 meters of rails have been installed. 160 elements on the left track and 160 on the right. The final pair is particularly special. It ultimately has to compensate for the tolerances that occur when building a wooden roller coaster. That's what we call a fitted panel. It's a section of rail that wasn't prefabricated based on plans. Instead, it was measured beforehand based on the final gap and was only manufactured afterwards. That means we haven't had any rails delivered for a while. We've all been waiting for the fitted panel. The crane lifts the final rail into place. The time reserves for the complete revamp have been used up and the team is running late. All of the companies that took part in the original construction of Colossus are also involved in its restoration. The planners were hoping that this experience would boost efficiency, but things have proved not to be so simple. 
A lot of time had passed, so things didn't go as smoothly as we'd first thought, because a lot had to be relearned during rail production. As a result, parts of the rails had to be removed and reworked again. Quite a lot, in fact. That delayed things a little and proved unexpectedly complicated because, in effect, this is another prototype. The final rail is installed at fitted panel 5. It's seated perfectly. The workers hammer in the final stud, number 960. That marks the closure and completion of the track. Yay! Closed! Closed. In terms of the rails, the team learned from its experiences with the old track. The new components should guarantee even longer durability. The bridging plates and rail joints are wider and longer than before. The track rails now have more threaded connections. Lots of details were further developed. One of the most important developments is the stainless steel threaded connections. They're much more expensive but necessary. Unlike zinc, steel doesn't react with the wood or its impregnation. And it remains intact for a long time, so you can retighten the bolts. The old bolts had deteriorated so much that they couldn't be retightened. Nothing will deteriorate here. A few days after completion, the new wagons are on the track. The test runs are taking place on April 1st of all days. The trains are loaded with plastic dummies of various designs. To achieve a realistic weight, they're filled with water. From the station, the first train ascends to the starting turn, a height of around 60 meters. The chain drive works perfectly. After the first turn, the train hurtles downwards. But there are no cries of fear or pleasure yet. Hundreds of sensors have been installed along the track to detect irregularities. Each malfunction first has to be programmed, tested, and simulated. An incredibly important but also very laborious process for the team. The testers are now doing around 40 laps every day. The runs are evaluated directly Readjustment and reprogramming are carried out time and again. The values from the old Colossus roller coaster are of little use. Basically, we've built a completely new roller coaster. It just happens to look almost identical to the old one. But the rails are new, the control system is new, and the trains are new. So the entire process of installing the track starts from the beginning. If we'd only exchanged the rails but not the control system, that would have been easy. But standards have changed in the meantime, and you have to take that into account. But time is pressing. In three weeks, Colossus is to be approved and open to the public. However, the trains are still causing difficulties. They're far too fast. Guests will think, great, fast trains. But with a big extreme roller coaster like this, that also means you quickly reach the limits of what's acceptable, whether they're medical or material limits. So now we have to do lots of test runs, lots of adjustment work. We're trying out various wheel materials. We have various brakes on the track that now have to be programmed. When are they applied or not to regulate the speed? It's really a pretty big problem. If the brakes are applied too much at the front, the wagon is too slow at the rear. Fine tuning is now needed. All load conditions are also simulated. Empty and fully loaded, children only or just heavy set people. Each scenario is played through here. So the plastic passengers go round and round, thundering past the workers involved in converting the Colossus station. That's all good. Not a problem. We were delighted when it finally started up again. I think it'll be more interesting than before. It's got a bit more kick. The wooden roller coaster's entire surroundings are being redecorated to match the new theme. 
Around 30 lamps have been installed with technology that simulates flames, some LED light strips, and then new lighting effects in the station. Effects in the figure, too. Quite a lot. The station interior is also being redesigned. Artist Vitaly Rasparov is at work in front of the entrance to Colossus. He has to repaint a total area of 1,000 square meters. Not just the station itself, but also the shops and snack bars. Everything has to match the new theme. Clash of the Titans. You have to get into it a bit and understand it and get a feel for how you can design it. Of course, I received sketches from the designer in London. Then I came up with a solution and did some samples on different timber boards. Then I was told that's how we want it. So I started to design all of the buildings. The basic color is jet black. The artist has almost used up his fifth 10-liter pail. The professional artist uses a trick to produce the new flame look. I built this thing myself. It's for special effects. And now we have flame effects everywhere. The artist has been working at Heide Park for five months. There are two weeks to go. Then the flame effects have to be finished. I have set dates for specific objects. The shop, for example, should have been finished two weeks ago. The hot dog stands too. Fix dates wherever you look. Not only the artist, but the entire park team is now working extra shifts. The punctual opening deadline cannot be jeopardized. In the final phase, work is therefore being carried out at night and on weekends as well. And the schedule can be kept too. The team managed to complete all of the work on time. The water dummies have left the roller coaster. Now visitors are all to fill the trains. But only if no defects are discovered on the reopening date the carpenter responsible carries out a final inspection of the entire ride. I'm not only taking a look at the rails, but also the construction around the rails. For example, I'm also looking at the ledgers to make sure all of the bolts are fastened. Whether there are any cracks or anything else unusual. I'm also checking whether all of the walkways are in place, whether the timbers at the side are still there. You just take a good look around, and sometimes I climb down as well. Always at two or three points that you have to keep your eyes on. Particular attention is paid to the new construction with its now completed demon. The figure's new. This is pretty much my first experience of it, so I'm going to take a closer look at this area. When he leaves the rails, Kasten Hennig uses the fall arrester. It protects him by engaging and locking if he stumbles or falls. From down here, the carpenter checks whether any part of the rail connections has changed due to the test runs. This is what's called the stopper rail, this is the guide rail, and that's the running rail. There are bolts in them everywhere, and bolts that are inserted up here come out down here, so you have to climb down occasionally and have a look. All of the bolts are visible, none are missing. It's also clear that they're secured with the so-called stop nuts. They serve a particularly important purpose on Colossus, because its wooden structure is constantly in motion. When it rains, it swells up slightly. And when we have a longer hot spell, it contracts. That's why we also have sprinklers on the ride to compensate for that, so that the swelling isn't excessive. 
And thanks to the stop nuts, the bolts always remain in the same position, so the pressure doesn't destroy the timber. It's living and breathing, expands and contracts. When the roller coaster is in operation, two other mechanics and a carpenter walk along the track each morning. Karsten Hennig is mainly responsible for the one and a half kilometer long timber construction. He pays attention to every detail and knocks on wood a lot, not only because it's lucky. If you listen to a handrail like this, for example, you can tell whether it might be loose. Then it makes certain noises or clacks. But we have these safety cables here too. If a bolt ever comes loose, the safety cable is always there. Everything's actually secured twice. Markings make his job easier, and each support is clearly labeled. Notes are also attached to the sections. Here, each anomaly is noted and then dealt with by the engineers. A very important new sensor has been fitted on support 392. As soon as the train passes this point on the track, it triggers the fire and fog effects on the themed figure. It's firmly attached as well. And then the climbing really begins. Everything has to be perfect ahead of the big reopening in a few hours. But the rope isn't long enough. Kostin Hennig can't go to where he wants to be. I'll just have to change position. I've seen a couple of nails that I want to knock in. You can tell that the dry period is slowly coming. And with these new stresses, a few of the nails can start to work loose. He rehooks, and off he goes. You always have to be a bit careful, of course. It's a lot of effort for two slightly loose nails. I'll fasten that around here. Here's the guards, the rope doesn't... Uh... And then I can hit this little unimportant nail here and clack, it's in. The brake system is much more complex. It's been completely newly installed. That solved the problem with the excessively fast wagons. Nine block brakes now engage at five positions along the track if necessary, fully automatically. We have to control the train speed when it's moving. It has no brakes on board, they're fitted on the track. We knew in advance that we'd have to brake, but not where the ideal positions were. We found that out during the test runs. Seemingly minor things are also noticed during the inspection. Bolts have come loose, that needs to be fixed. One of the lawn sprinklers for watering the timber is missing, and the whole thing is loose. Everything's tight down there, and... but these two need fastening. We'll let a colleague know and he'll take care of it. Everything is carefully inspected from below as well. After a long dry spell, slight washer jingling is okay. Everything's okay here? In order. There are roughly 750,000 nails and around 80 tons of bolts and anchors in the timber structure. The carpenter then climbs aboard the cherry picker, which can take him up to a height of 40 meters. We're going back to the banked turn now. I want to take a look at one of those sprinklers. Because I saw that the other one is loose, so I'd like to check whether that one is loose as well. He's hardly come down before he goes back up for a final check of the rear lawn sprinkler. Time is now pressing. It's tight. Mission accomplished. My colleagues are still going around. And I have to go to the station now. <laughs> At the station, the Colossus team is awaiting the final assessment. 
Oh, alles yeah, everything's okay. We found one small thing. We'll take care of that right away. The most important thing now is to discuss with my colleagues what's been found and that everything went well so they can get the trial run started. I can't complain. It's been a good day and great weather. The great weather and the reopening attract masses of people. And today, everyone wants to ride on Colossus. At the moment, though, the trains are still empty and creeping into the station. The final technical tests are underway. All signals and safety systems are checked, so nothing is left to chance. The trains then do a couple of test laps, empty. Misha, you doing the test run? No. Oh, it's you. Attention. Misha's doing a test run. So take position. After the unmanned runs, the park's employees are allowed to do a test lap. It's always claimed that the guests are the first ones on the track, but that's not true, of course. Logically, we have to do our own acceptance runs. It's fun on the one hand, but also necessary to get a feel for things with your bottom meter, as we call it. Is the track good? We've got test values and so on that tell you all this, but it's better to test it subjectively. If we enjoy it, the rest of the world should finally enjoy it now, too. Two minutes and 23 seconds from the lift back to the station. For Carpenter Kasten Hennig, it was the first time in a long time. Fantastic. The hills. Just great when you're coming up to the figure. Wow. Then finally the gates open. The visitors flock to their long anticipated Colossus. The people responsible have been testing it up to the very last second. We want to run at full capacity straight away. That's why we tested it. We gave ourselves half an hour, so there are no interruptions in operation later on. The party's about to kick off now. The public's really up for it. All systems run perfectly. Open and close the entrance doors. And then the most important thing, of course, start the train so the guests can have fun. <laughs> The first train filled with visitors starts off, marking the official reopening of Colossus, three years after it closed. At 110 kilometers per hour, back and forth, up and down, one and a half kilometers over wooden rails. And right at the end, the new highlight, the demon with a healthy dose of show effects. Yes! <laughs> the planners are convinced that they haven't just reopened the ride, but have made it better. Ultimately, though, it's only the guests' opinion that counts for an amusement park. That was so incredible! Brilliant, totally great. Fast, high, excellent. Worth repeating. We can take a winter break then, right? Great. Three years of work. It's been a long road for the entire team. 20 companies were involved in the complete revamp and finally ensured that Colossus returned. Europe's fastest wooden roller coaster. It's not just any old project. For us at Hyder Park, it's one of the projects in recent years. Our favorite roller coaster, the most popular attraction at the park. It's just fantastic that it's finally running again. 